honestly, one of the big things on my mind right now is what are going to be the consequences for Luffy once Gear 4 runs out. Because we know from this chapter, we find out there's a time limit to it. He's overusing his hockey in combination with it. What is going to happen to Luffy is one of the biggest things that is just crossing my mind. Because it's like, this is a huge risk apparently. Like, he has this great power, but it's at a cost. And the time limit is one thing, but the only thing I could really think of is he's possibly going to be sleeping for days after this one maybe he'll just be completely unconscious and he won't be able to do anything which that's a big risk in and of itself either that or again it could be everlasting health problems to him i mean maybe his skin will be completely blubbery or some shit and he won't be able to put it back together for days or something there's something as well like the expansion will make it so that he'll shrink but the skin the rubber or whatever will stay there's something i don't know funny that one piece might do now burgess why is he with a double fruit shaped bag in back of him saying, should I just stay here? Should I go over there? What's going on? I honestly think he's just waiting for whoever loses, whoever dies, he's going to go and snag the devil fruit because probably already Blackbeard showed him the way of where to wait or what's going to happen. And then once the devil fruit, you know, reappears, he's going to immediately snatch it up so he can either get Luffy's devil fruit or Doflamingo's devil fruit, which if he gets his hands on Doflamingo's devil fruit, either Burgess or Blackbeard or anybody in the Blackbeard Pirates, that's going to be a huge upgrade as well. And yet again, the Blackbeard Pirates are going to just be out of this world too strong when the time comes for, like, the final fight or whatever with Luffy and the crew against them. Because, I mean, if they get that fruit, if they get Doflamingo's fruit, just think about it. Like, imagine Blackbeard can do that and the Awakenings as well. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's one of the biggest things I felt that this chapter brought forth, which apparently it was hinted a while ago, these Awakenings, with Crocodile, a comment that he made way back when or whatever. So that's something that you got to note as well, that Oda, yet again, being the genius that he is, he foreshadowed this ages ago, and he brought it forth once again. And, I mean, I don't know, that's just awesome writing in and of itself. And I really gotta make you wonder just what all the different abilities that people have, like, the different awakenings that are possible. I mean, the Quake Quake fruit. Imagine having an awakening with the Quake Quake, what, like, making earthquakes all over the world or something all around you, everything becomes earthquake. Like, there's just so many possibilities right now with this whole awakening thing, and I could totally see... Not now, but definitely in the distant future, Luffy will have an awakening as well. I don't know if everything will turn rubber around him or something along the lines of that, but that's definitely confirmation that somebody is going to have a big awakening from the Straw Hats, and it'll probably be Luffy first. And I'm curious if Oda's setting up for a potential Koala versus Burgess. Like, I don't know if Koala can necessarily take out Burgess. I mean, at the end of the day, Sabo was putting in work and seemingly was fucking him up for the most part, but Koala isn't even on Sabo's level, like, Sabo is second in command, Koala, who knows what rank she has right now, but nonetheless, I, I would like to see that, I would like to see exactly what Koala from the Revolutionary Army can do, is she just, like, a tactician, does she have battle skills, I mean, at the end of the day, she's kind of hiding there, so that kind of speaks volumes about, at the very least, her confidence to take out Burgess, if she's even going to confront him for that matter, but definitely something interesting there, and again, it kind of makes you wonder, what are the Revolutionary Army doing there, aside from Sabo going to protect his little brother, and will there be consequences for Sabo, did he do this against Monkey D. Dragon's orders, like, will Dragon say, yo, what the fuck you think you're doing, and throw him out of the Revolutionary Army or something, because Dragon's always moved very quietly he's always done things very strategic and Sabo's just blowing a hole right through that and maybe Dragon won't like it maybe he'll be like why are you helping your brother he's supposed to do things himself I ain't gonna lie though there were mad pages that felt like just a big old recap I understand Riku got us cry and tell everyone yet again hey Doflamingo's a true villain no you gotta like Luffy and the best thing that that does is give a good setup yet again that Luffy could potentially get a bounty raise in the future but aside from that it just felt like we had a good four pages or so of recap of everything we know that Doflamingo's bad, he tricked you, he's, you know, he turned us all into toys, blah, 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 and it was just like, Riku, shut the fuck up and quit wasting pages. I mean, let's be real here, in one page, for the most part, we could have got the gist of that, we didn't really need all that. And towards the end of the chapter, it definitely makes you look at One Piece, and you gotta think to yourself, look how progressively big and better and grander these fights have gotten, or not better, I won't say better, but grander and just on a larger scale than they've ever been. Like, he's in the sky doing Leo Bazooka, launching Doflamingo into a building. Like, again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. One Piece fights are slowly but surely getting to that DBZ level. Like, just imagine, right now we're probably... I, I don't want to say we're at the halfway mark. We're past the halfway mark by now. But wherever we're at in the story, we're definitely, by the end, we're going to have just, like, these humongous battles that are just beyond belief. Because, like, if he's doing this now, and I think there's still way more progression for Luffy to come through... 
and the fights are going to be humongous. And in retrospect, even though in my live reaction, I was like, oh, this seemingly is the end. We just got introduced to Awakenings. We just seen Doflamingo's Awakenings. I don't think this is the end of the fight just yet. Maybe Doflamingo has one more ace up his sleeve or something. I think there still might be a little bit more left and somebody's going to have to step in. Maybe Luffy is going to pass out from gear fourth. He's going to run out. Doflamingo is going to still have a little life left in him. And then maybe Sabo is going to come through. But with the introduction of Awakenings in this chapter, it would just seem like, wow, why would you introduce that and immediately end the fight right after? So I think there's still more life to Doflamingo than what we've just seen, like him being launched. I mean, he's fucked up, but I think he's going to still have one or two tricks left. But with all that being said, very good chapter. After. Aside from seeing some Tontada BS and the recap from Riku, everything else was solid. Yet again, progressing in the fight, seemingly going towards the end of Luffy versus Doflamingo. And then the setup with Burgess with that bag, seemingly waiting to grab that devil fruit. Finding out more about Gear 4 and his time limits, and seemingly Luffy is on a risky situation here. So an 8 out of 10 for this one. Very good stuff. I'm excited to see what's going to happen next, if Dawn is down or not. But either way, just very good stuff. And Gear 4, to me personally, I know a lot of people are hating it or whatever. There's haters, there's lovers of it, I think it's fucking awesome, I love just the amount of progression that Luffy has had as a fighter because of it, he can fly now, god damn it, but let me know what you guys thought of the chapter, is Dawn down for good, what is Burgess planning, is he planning to get one of their fruits, are we gonna see a Burgess versus Koala fight, and how many times do you think Riku has cried up till now, but that's all I have for this review, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, if you liked anything I had to say, or enjoyed the video, drop me a like, I'd greatly appreciate it, and if you haven't subscribed, if you do so as well, that'd be amazing, I'm Fnub World, and as always people, have an awesome day.